Yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Mycena says overly fixating on, on pro-Hamas lefties paints an inaccurate picture. It's literally helping the, it's literally helping right-wingers. It helps right-wingers to overly fixate on stupid assholes instead of going, shut the fuck up about some irrelevant Twitter poster, I'm talking to you right now about the facts of the situation. As we speak right now, Israel and all of its allies is justifying revenge on civilians. Address that. Don't fucking talk to me about some stupid, irrelevant moron on Twitter. Talk to me about the facts of the issue. Stay on topic. Don't fucking pivot away. No, lefties go, well, um, um, they choose one of two paths. They go, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not that type of lefty. Please, please, I'm one of the good ones. I'm not like that. Watch, look, I'll make fun of them for three days just so you know I'm not one of them. As the person on the other side is making the psycho Wojak face with their t sharp teeth grinning from ear to ear going, yes, the lefties are fighting, infighting while I drop bombs on innocent people. Yes, we get to do an ethnic cleansing. lovely, lovely imps. Today, I am going to get mad at the online left. And, uh, I've talked about this subject at various points in the history of my channel. It seems to be something that, you know, comes back. And I try to temper my opinion on the online left for reasons that I'll get into in a minute. But sometimes I feel like there's no other option except to just kind of talk about it. Okay, um, as many of you who uh, are watching now uh, will know, uh, over the last week, uh, a bunch of very shocking news has come uh, out of uh, Israel and Palestine. Um, <laughs> it has been uh, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of death, uh, it has been an incredibly uh, heavy and stressful and terrifying topic for a lot of people. And I think that the online left specifically, specifically the online portions of the left have um, failed in a lot of fronts. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that with a lot of, with as much specificity as I can manage. Um, but I think that it's, we need to acknowledge that there's been a serious failure. Um, there has been uh, a lot of development on this Israel-Palestine uh, issue in the last week. It started with a, uh, a attack uh, uh, on Israel by the uh, group, the Islamic far-right group Hamas, um, which uh, uh, resulted in uh, the murder of a bunch of Israeli, um, uh, both military targets and civilians. Um, and it has now uh, expanded into a, a genuinely genocidal reprisal against the entirety of specifically uh, the Gaza Strip, um, uh, which is one of the most densely populated, if not the most densely populated area on earth. Uh, over 2 million people uh, live in the Gaza Strip. And just for some statistics, so that we're clear about the state of affairs right now, um, at, shortly after the attack, Israel cut off all electricity running into the Gaza Strip, has now uh, and since then has uh, stopped all food shipments, has prevented all humanitarian aid, including medical aid, from entering the Gaza Strip, um, and given that the Gaza Strip is occupied and controlled territory by uh, Israel, they have a lot of ability to cut off all of these basic utilities. In addition, since my last update on this, 6,000 bombs have been dropped on Gaza in six days. More than 1,000 bombs per day, okay? Um... And the total death toll uh, uh, is uh, 1,537 Palestinians, 500 of which have been confirmed as children, 
and uh, 1,300 uh, Israelis have been killed. Um, I was not able to find any information released by Israel on how many of those uh, were children. Um, I, I did a very solid look. There has been uh, a lot of misinformation, um, but humanitarian groups have confirmed 500 children have died in the bombings in Gaza. So there's that, okay? There's just some information to have on the table uh, to keep in your mind uh, in all of this. Um, <sighs> so there are a couple of people, uh, specific people that I really want to shout out um, in the online left who I want to be clear, uh, I think deserve some, some genuine praise, okay? Um, the first person that I want to praise is a content creator that many of you from, are familiar with by the name of Vosh. Um, I have watched a lot of Vosh's coverage of this issue and I have found Vosh to be uh, uh, handling it with a very good level of care for what he, for the type of content that he creates. And additionally, that he has stayed uh, uh, very much uh, focusing on the issues that matter. Additionally, I wanted to shout out who is in chat right now. I did mention earlier that I was already planning on shouting out Sock Dunn Left. Um, I wanted to shout out the fact that Sock Dunn Left has also uh, been uh, someone who I have seen uh, focusing on what matters in this situation um, and not getting uh, overly focused on uh, pointless uh, things. So I wanted to shout out at least those two. Um, obviously, uh, the Majority Report uh, is, a, is a channel that I've always had a lot of faith in when it comes to this issue. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, and actually, this one is going to be a bit of a surprise. Um, uh, but Chapo Trap House, I know gonna be a hot take because I know that they've had some issues in the past on some of these issues, but in this particular wave of things, Chapo Trap House's response was to invite on a journalist uh, to very soberly and without basically any comedy, uh, just discuss this issue with a great depth of, uh, of, uh, of compassion. And um, I, I was very surprised because I was a little bit worried uh, that that was not gonna be the case. Um, but I listened to their coverage of this and I thought that was um, really good. Also, President Sunday, although small critiques for President Sunday has been a little bit of, uh, President Sunday has gotten a little lost in some drama along the way, but overall, President Sunday has done a pretty good job, um, uh, you know, focusing on the main issues. Um, so I wanted to shout out a couple of people, and this is not an exhaustive list. I know that there are other people who've done very good, but those were the people who I had in mind um, when I was thinking about all of this. Um, because uh, I feel like of all of the people that I've mentioned here have approached this issue in this particular instance very well. <sighs> what we are witnessing right now is um, a level of fervor that I haven't really seen since 9-11, uh, which is a long time ago. Um, but the bloodthirstiness, the uh, storm of misinformation, the willingness to basically take any piece of information that seems to confirm your narrative and immediately throw it up uh, uh, as an argument um, has been truly shocking, okay? It's, it's really, really bad. And um, my God, it is sickening, okay? Uh, there is so much stuff that I wanna talk about. There's so much that I wanna touch on that it's actually hard for me to just condense it all down. I have, I have been filling my bookmarks on multiple web pages with just so much stuff. I mean, I just wanna, I just, can I just give you guys an, I mean, oh my God, like, can I just give you a, an idea of what we're dealing with right now? This is the Israeli Air Force posting uh, uh, victorious photos of them having leveled 
residential areas. Look, this is a residential area you are looking at that has been turned into dust. Okay? These are houses. These are people's apartments. This is not a base. These are visibly people's houses. And this is the official account of the Israeli Air Force. And if you look at this post and the other things that they're saying with it, I just, hold on a second. I want to show the, the response that they had here because it's, it's genuinely deranged. The airstrikes killed hundreds of terrorists and attacked over 3,600 targets, including command and control targets, strategic military infrastructure, weapons production sites, intelligence assets, leadership targets, naval superiority targets, and rocket system targets. We will continue to attack forcefully and relentlessly as long as necessary. And the pictures that they have decided to volunteer are visibly pictures of residential buildings being flattened. Who do you think was living in there? Do you think that these were city blocks of uh, every single person living in these buildings was a civit was a uh, was a uh, uh, a terrorist? They were all just 3D printing RPGs in their fucking apartment building. And, and my God, it's it's been uh, genuinely out of control. And I need there's another piece of news that I need to talk about right now before I get into the raging about the online left in full. OK, I've started by opening with the people that I think that I've seen. I wanted to spend some time giving it good props to people that I've seen doing well. Uh, and I want to talk about a little bit of the news issues and then we'll get into what has made me so angry. Human Rights Watch uh, today reported that they have now confirmed that Israel is using white phosphorus in Gaza. Israel's use of white phosphorus in military operations in Gaza and Lebanon puts civilians at risk of serious and long-term injuries. Human Rights Watch said today after releasing a Q&A document on white phosphorus, Human Rights Watch has verified photos taken in Lebanon and Gaza from the dates of October 10 and 11, 2023, respectively, showing multiple airbursts of artillery-fired white phosphorus over the Gaza city port and two rural locations along the Israel-Lebanon border. I want you to understand, first of all, that using white phosphorus uh, as a weapon um, is uh, a international war crime in and of itself. And the reason for this is that white phosphorus is a, a chemical uh, weapon when used like this that uh, explodes into a powder, uh, a, a powdery, uh, grainy, uh, 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 particulate that clogs the air uh, and also burns everything that it touches. And the thing that's interesting about white phosphorus is that it burns for a very, very long time. In fact, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to go and look up information. I can't look it up because it's actually against TOS for me to show a lot of the images um, on stream. But even if you just go to simple pages like the Wikipedia page about white phosphorus, you can find information about what the treating of white phosphorus includes. White phosphorus, um, when it is treated, is often has to be removed out of the body while it is still burning because it simply will not stop burning. And there are doctors, if they remove it and they don't remove it carefully, it will embed itself into their flesh and tunnel down as well. It burns, uh, it sticks in the body, it burns for an incredible amount of time, it can tunnel all the way down to the bone, and the official way that you have to remove it is by cutting around all of the flesh around it and basically socketing it out so that you can pull it out without it burning the tools, without it burning even deeper into the flesh. It is one of the most heinous and horrible uh, weapons uh, of the modern day. In addition to that, when it powders and goes into your lungs, it bores through the layers of your lungs. It burns holes in your lungs. 
It is a horrific nightmare, and it is a war crime to be using this. Uh, and by the way, in case you, in case there was anybody out there who was going, oh, you know, maybe there was a secret base hidden in those apartment buildings, you can't apply that to the white phosphorus. One of the reasons why using white phosphorus is an international war crime is because white phosphorus can't be controlled. When you launch it into an area, the wind carries it around. You cannot control it in a single area. It covers and it hits indiscriminately in an area. It burns through the flesh and the lungs and the eyes and the nose and eventually the other organs of anybody who is in the vicinity. And you can't run away from it once it's gotten onto you. Once it's on you, it starts burning. You can't just wash it off. It will burn down to your bones. So we now have third party human rights organizations reporting this shit. The uh, various uh, representatives of the Israeli government have been incredibly uh, explicit about their intention to, um, to uh, do incredible violence um, onto the P Palestinian people. The Israeli government does not distinguish between uh, civilian and military targets. They are celebrating, the Israeli military is celebrating, openly celebrating very obvious war crimes, damage against civilians in one of the most densest populated places on the planet. Uh, yes. There have been reports that uh, aid workers got bombed. Um, those have been confirmed. And it's, uh, it's interesting too, because there's been a lot of misinformation going around and not all of it, by the way, um, is, is like, uh, is like uh, you know, anti-Palestinian uh, misinformation. There has been a lot of misinformation around this. And you'll notice that the things that I have talked about on my stream um, have been very, very specific claims that are verified uh, to a great degree. Um, you want to know something that, uh, oh my God, there's just, oh man, it's so hard to talk about this. It's so hard to talk about this in a way that makes sense. Um, I got, in the, in the throughout this issue, uh, I ended up spending way more time on Twitter than I've ever wanted to, okay? I've been really, really good in the last few months of not spending time on Twitter. But um, Twitter is one of the places where a lot of this information moves very quickly. And I have to say, I don't think it's useful for this anymore. I really, really don't think that Twitter uh, is um, uh, at not even, it is not even a fraction of as useful as it used to be. Uh, it, there's always been a problem with misinformation on Twitter, but in the past, you could uh, you could filter out to some degree um, uh, with some care the amount of misinformation, but I just don't think that's even happening anymore. And what's worse is that I think that uh, Twitter is seized by another problem as well. Um, and it's not just Twitter here, because this has expanded elsewhere, but it is a, Twitter is a big problem of it, which is that um, it, has, it has made lefties as a whole um, uh, fails, like total, totally, total fails at, at, at basically everything they're supposedly trying to accomplish. Uh, the left is obviously a very difficult to define thing, and I think that we should be careful generally about being too broad when, uh, or, or being, uh, or using the term the left to, to, to say anything super conclusive. Because there's a lot of people who consider themselves the left who, uh, I don't think really fit any meaningful definition of that. I don't think you can gatekeep a label like the left very easily. I think it's quite difficult to do, in fact. Um, there are a lot of stupid people. Um, but throughout this, one of the things that I saw was uh, 
I saw a shocking lack of ability to critically think about the topic at hand. I saw a shocking inability of people to recognize um, the exact state of play that is going on in one of the most well-documented conflicts in history. It is not difficult to do a tiny bit of reading about what has been going on between Israel and Palestine, the open air conditions of Palestine, the fact that, uh, here's an example, here's an example, okay? Um, uh, you can literally, it is as easy as searching on Wikipedia. You can find out that, uh, that uh, Hamas was elected uh, as the government of the Gaza Strip after, during a civil war in 2006, uh, uh, and there hasn't been an election since then, okay? And why is that information relevant? Well, one, uh, for it would it would help people who uh, it would help people be able to actually engage with psychopaths who are saying and I've seen this over and over and over and over and over again all over social media recently I have seen these psychopathic people saying well the Palestinians elected the elected Hamas so who cares they should have voted harder why didn't they vote out Hamas? Well, newsflash, they didn't have an election since 2006, and the uh, the actual fairness of that election was heavily under question given that it occurred during a civil war and was followed by further civil war. So these fucking freaks who are saying, who cares about bombing the Palestinian? Who cares about, the, about this, that, and the other thing? And they say, well, you elected Hamas. If, if people just did a tiny bit of research, just, to, just the smallest bit, just a Wikipedia search would allow people to be able to go, hold on a second. First of all, that's a bad argument. And second of all, here's the facts of this situation. And more so, perhaps, no, not more so, but at the same time, it would also prevent a bunch of lefties or so-called lefties from saying things like, well, Hamas is a revolutionary power. or whatever, implying that it's somehow good, as if there aren't right-wing revolutions that are horrible, as if there aren't right-wing uprisings that are terrible. Even a small amount of research you want to know how how uh, upfront this is? One of the things that was uh, that was a, an amazing thing that if lefties had known anything about, if they had just taken a little bit of time, the most popular newspapers in Israel have written about this. Okay, so this isn't like fringe opinions that are bringing this sort of thing forward. Um, the idea here we go right here. Perfect example, which thank God. Oh, Big Joel was another person I wanted to shout out and I didn't mean to because Big Joel was one of the people who posted this article. Which is an article by Haaretz, one of the, the, I believe literally the most read newspaper in Israel, calling out the fact that Benjamin Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu explicitly told his party to financially support Hamas over any other party in Palestine because with the, and, and this is re recorded, it's on record, he's on record saying this, recorded by the most popular newspaper in Israel. Net Netanyahu is on record saying that you must support Hamas financially and legislatively because any other path will not allow us to undermine the stability of Palestine. Yeah, here's the article for anybody who wants to read the full article, okay? Just imagine how many lefties would be better off if they had just taken a little bit of time to read these things. And these are not, this is not hard to find information, okay? This is not difficult to find, okay? But also, I need to be clear, okay? There have been a lot of people, and, and this is one of the things that makes me really sick.
And I know that I'm, uh, to a certain degree, I'm engaging in this a little bit myself right now. I'm not unaware of that. But I feel like I have spent the vast majority of my time actually talking about what matters in this issue and pointing out the fact that from the moment that this entire incident sparked, we knew exactly how it was going to go. And on the left, the, 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 the so-called people who are fighting for liberation, the people who fight against a hierarchical world, the people who fight against the oppression of people, we should have been able to analyze this instantaneously and say, you have an apartheid state. And when an attack happens from that state, the conservative, the hyper-conservative fascistic government that militarily occupies uh, 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 Palestine is going to try and use that attack to justify an insane, an insane repercussive action that is going to absolutely and unequivocally and unquestionably kill more civilians than could have ever been killed in any, in any terrorist attack. We on the left should have been able to see this a thousand miles in advance and know exactly how it went, especially American leftists who, who, who should know about 9-11 and how everything went in 9-11. But you know what I saw a lot of on Twitter and even on YouTube? I saw a lot of lefties spending all their time dunking on uh, idiot lefties, whether it was the same old tanky characters who always have bad takes on these issues, whether it was, uh, you know, a cringe Hassan mod. A streamer who made cringe statements, whether it was BLM Chicago, one of the BLM groups made a super cringe ass tweet. I saw more of that than people actually documenting the 6,000 bombs being dropped into Gaza, the fact that electricity, food, and medical aid has been cut off, the fact that 500 children have been killed in uh, uh, as revenge for a terrorist act by this by by the state that controls this this uh, this pop this uh territory and i understand that lefties who are super pro hamas and whatever are super cringe and tankies are super fucking cringe guys i know okay and i'm totally fine with, with making fun of them and calling them out and all kinds of things, but I can't help but feel like it is a, uh, it is, it is a failure in a moment of this level of importance to spend even a significant amount of your time making, making people with bad takes on the left uh, a focus when Joe Biden is spreading misinformation and engaging and, and saying we unequivocally support the actions of Israel. When uh, France is banning protests, that ha Palestinian protests, not, not pro-Hamas protests, Palest protests in favor of Palestine. When nearly every allied nation of Israel is saying we unequivocally support Israel's right to defend itself. And what they mean by defend itself is we are not going to condemn when they blow up buildings and flatten apartment buildings full of civilians. Not full of terrorists, full of civilians. When they white phosphorus the most densely populated place on earth. One of. Obviously, I think I think someone said in chat that Singapore is is more. And and I get it again, because lefties can be. There's some lefties on the internet that are super cringe, but if you're devoting your platform to sort of nervously uh, denouncing all of the bad takes that you take on that you see on Twitter instead of the global mobilization towards genocide. You have lost the plot, and it's a failure, and we need to call it for what it is. I am just an entertainer, okay? 
on this website, I talk about political issues, sometimes serious issues, but at the end of the day, I'm a fucking YouTuber, okay? So it's not like I'm getting super high and mighty here, but I think I can call it when something's really important and that we might not have been doing collectively a good job. And there's a lot of people out there who don't have the same type of, uh, of entertainer approach that I do. There are a lot of people out there who claim that they're sources of information, who are, are serious political people who are doing just this, who are spending so much time and energy, spending so so much attention um, trying to make fun of random irrelevant people having bad takes on Twitter. It's a fucking brain disease. And it's, it is, if, you, if people, if the argument is that people are being like cringe or a uh, useless virtue signaling, then what the, what is the, what is the point of virtual virtue signaling in your own direction on top of an already cringe and wasteful virtue signal instead of actually talking about what matters, instead of pointing out the fact that as we speak right now, there is an entire propaganda machine operating to justify uh, 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 the flattening of residential blocks. And I, I'm not, I don't want to spend this time calling out individual people because I think that's a waste of time. Instead, what I'm calling for is I'm calling for lefties, people who consider themselves a part of the online left to think for a fucking minute. It's really funny because there's been this, uh, this thing echoing in my mind. Uh, you know, you know, in SpongeBob, you know the salty pl spittoon? Imagine the online left is the salty spittoon. And you walk up to the salty spittoon and they say, Welcome to the online left! How stupid are ya? And that's been how I felt through this entire thing. Has been uh, a giant contest uh, to just waste time on an issue that everyone seems to agree is important. Everyone seems to agree. Nobody seems to be saying this isn't important, okay? So it's not like I'm targeting people who are just shit posters who don't give a shit. I'm talking about people who claim to give a shit about this issue. People who claim that this is a major moral political issue. And people are wasting their time like, I don't know, uh, 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 bending over backwards to like denounce some irrelevant idiot somewhere else. Like, I don't know what the fuck is the point of that? Why wouldn't you just use your platform to talk about what matters? And this is why I shouted out people like Vosh. Uh, Vosh has spent almost no time. Now he's, I've seen him say a couple little jokes here and there making fun of people th saying bad things. No, no hate there. But most of what he's done has been to stay on point, pointing out the fact that a horrible terrorist attack happened. And that horrible terrorist attack is now being used as a justification to commit a even more horrible, more numerous, l less escapable terrorist attack. As if these are, as if that's the, that's the, that's a fair thing to do. As if when a, a single group of people go and do a terrorist attack, the the right answer is to punish another unrelated group of people. And that's not even. This isn't even getting into the misinformation shit. And it's also not even touching on the liberals, okay? You guys wanna, you wanna truly black pill yourself. Go see what liberals are saying about this, okay? Because let me tell you, uh, for all of the anger that I have at the online left, part of it is because I hold the online left to a higher standard than I do liberals. Liberals, they're done for. Liberals are like ready to do a genocide right now. The moment this shit happened, they were like, Biden is right. Let's ship a nuke to let's let's ship a nuke over there and show these terrorists what's what. It's like Iraq war all over again. Like they didn't learn anything. They're just totally ready to kill unrelated people for no reason. It's insane.
The liberals are like it, it is pathetic. The arguments and the co and the conversations and the statements I've seen from the liberal sphere is fucking pathetic. It's genuinely so fucking sickening. I can't even believe it. I'm sorry. I just uh, I I I don't see how memeing about Hamas is helpful, and I don't really see how it's helpful to spend your time getting angry at people memeing about Hamas. On, from just a purely mathematical perspective, this is just a think moment. Think, okay? Think, lefties, okay? Who do you think? Who do you think is getting more attention right now? Is it the fact that Joe Biden uh, uh, spread explicit misinformation about 40 be beheaded babies and then immediately had to issue a correction that nobody saw? Did you know that? Did you know that uh, Biden went and made a statement saying that he had seen pictures of of uh, beheaded babies and then had to uh, issue a correction afterwards and said, uh, uh, oh wait, actually no, we didn't. I Even though I gave a speech and said that I saw pictures, we weren't actually provided any pictures and we haven't seen any evidence of that. Who do you think is more important? Joe Biden saying we unequivocally support Israel's action as Israel is dropping 6,000 bombs into one of the most densely populated civilian areas on earth or some random really fucking cringe and annoying lefty. Which one do you think has a, just on a pure mathematics level, like a fucking, let's think for a second, on a pure mathematics level, which one is more important to deal with? Do you guys remember the imps code? <laughs> I found myself desperately uh, wanting to repeat the imps code this weekend. The first part of imps code was immediately stop discoursing on Twitter. Because that's what a lot of this was. There was an absolute shitload of, of meaningless discourse, of wasted energy, of people just literally it would have been better for people to just make a statement stating even a single fact about the situation retweeting a single piece of evidence that wasn't misinformation would have been more useful than people getting mad uh, about nonsense and i want you to think about this we can take this to the next level too um I, I think that it's very easy to denounce that really, really cringe ass meme post, meme post that was posted by BLM Chicago. Some people know what I'm talking about. Uh, BLM Chicago tweeted like an image that had like a picture of a, of like a parasailing soldier, like a, like a soldier in one of the, uh, one of the little paragliders that was used to invade and do a terrorist attack. And it said, we stand with Palestine incredibly stupid uh, and thoughtless position. But um, guys, BLM Chicago is one city's chapter of one organization and it's their Twitter account. So we don't even know if the full org supports this shit. They also deleted it and issued an apology. So I don't think the entire org does that. So what do you think is more impactful? the Chicago branch of the BLM's social media manager posted a cringe meme or the president of the United States and the heads of all of the United States allies unequivocally saying that they support this. Which one of those is more important? Which one of those is more impactful and more worthy of talking about? Also, the main, P oh yeah, as people are pointing out, the main BLM org said that the BLM Chicago is not even an affiliated organization. So we got another fake news. We got another fucking fake news situation here. Yeah, see, this is part of, the, again, here's part of the reason why I shouted out Socked on Left. Why don't we see journalists hounding these politicians? Israeli military, we will flatten Gaza. Marco Rubio, they should flatten Gaza. Lindsey Graham, they should flatten Gaza. Joe Biden, we 100% support Israel. All I hear about is some cringe DSA statements. Let's hear, let's hear this, let's hear this. We're in a religious yeah. war here, I am with Israel. Do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself. Level the place. 
We're in a religious yeah. war here. I am with Israel. Do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself. Level the place. We're it doesn't get more unequivocal than that. And this is why I am so mad at the online left right now. I'm going to retweet that. I just, I just, I just get so mad because leftists online, and a lot of this is because uh, so much of the online left has, uh, has not yet adapted to the fact that Twitter is done, that they've let themselves actually get Twitter mental illness, um, but that uh, that we can't handle it. The, the online left, and remember, this is me talking as a fucking entertainer, okay? I'm a goofball, I make silly noises, and I play Dark Souls, and I occasionally talk about issues that are important to me. Most of the time, uh, I don't get uh, super, super heavy. But when I do, I try to take it seriously. But the online left as a whole, uh, we get tanked. We get aggroed way too easily. We get trolled. We are susceptible to uh, uh, complete and utter uh, uh, undermining of our own positions because we don't know how to even fucking focus on the issues. And this is, a, this, is a, this is what I would consider to be an easy issue, okay? We have politicians explicitly, we just watched Lindsey, we just watched Lindsey Graham say we should flatten them. We have been, we've been through all this. You can see the public statements of Netanyahu and the Israeli officials unequivocally saying, we are just going to kill a ton of civilians. We are just going to kill a ton of people who didn't do any damage to us. Innocent people, we are gonna kill them as revenge. And and this, this should be easy. The left should go, we need to act against this. We need to do whatever we can to stay on message to oppose this. We need to make sure that information is getting out of, out of our bubbles and into normies' hands so that they can be more informed on this issue. And instead, tons of people are fucking wasting time dunking on some fucking idiotic Twitter poster who said something stupid and heinous instead of actually going after the targets that matter instead of actually talking about the fact that tons of people are dying giving people the tools to be smarter on this topic the online left is failing like just utterly and and completely failing okay and there are some of us who are doing our best but uh Let's just say the online left is not sending the good warriors who are actually doing the who are actually fighting the fight. You're not sending us a whole lot of support, okay? And I'm not talking to my audience, obviously. I love my fucking audience. I know, I know that a lot of my audience doesn't engage in this shit because you guys get fucking yelled at by me about it all the time, to be fair. Not saying there's nobody in my audience who hasn't engaged in this shit. But I'm just saying. I go through this all the time, all right? But the online left, the big left, the lots of left, okay? There's a lot of fucking stupid behavior. And I'm talking mega stupid. I'm talking so stupid that it's infuriatingly stupid. Did Lindsey Graham just deus vold live TV? Yeah, he did. And I'm not saying that like lefties need to like, like like American lefties and the online left or whatever need to solve the Israel-Palestine situation because we can't, okay? But we could be doing a hell of a lot better than we are now, okay? A hell of a lot better than we are right now. We could be doing way better. And part of it comes from bad, bad habits being, um, being encouraged okay and being enabled part of it comes from uh uh so much of online left thought being filtered through twitter and twitter alone like so many lefties spending so much time on twitter means that they just get bombarded with misinfo and they don't know how to actually filter it out like i said at the beginning of this i don't even know where to go from now from here i'm just fucking tired of it and also, I'm tired of everybody acting like they're super, 
uh, high and mighty when they get get uh, you know uh, face tanked by the most obvious like child idiot posting, like. 90% of the cringe lefty takes that I saw online were irrelevant nobodies who have who have next to no reach saying something really stupid and easily disprovable. And the other 10% were from people who I have no idea who they are who are almost assuredly posting from Langley, Virginia. Like, seriously, can you imagine like being like not not understanding the issues so uh, so poorly? Uh, that that like like ch literal children on Twitter can successfully take you off message. What would be your call to action to help this issue? Get real. Wake up. If you're actually serious about politics, if you consider yourself a lefty and you're actually serious about politics, fucking do a little bit of basic math and realize that right now, the the co the topic of conversation should be doing whatever we can whatever we can to effectively uh, educate people about the the way that this uh, this a, a genocide is unfolding in real time being supported by state actors who have a vested interest in maintaining power. The reason why America backs Israel is not because um, America thinks Israel is morally correct. It's because America. Uh, America want it, America wants Israel for a strategic reason. So they will find any reason to justify anything that they're doing and will stand with them no matter what. The reason why Israel does this is because people in power in Israel want more power. People like Netanyahu want control over the people. They want to control more space. They want to control more uh, uh, more land. They want to grow their own power. And they found ways to justify weakening people that they think threaten their bid for power. Innocent people who are standing in the way of their bid to power. And we should be teaching people about that, not fucking um, uh, g getting distracted, fucking arguing about uh, uh, getting getting tanked by by idiots talking about Hamas in a positive way. Again, I pointed out the whole Hamas thing in two seconds. You can go, uh, you can just go and go. Why the fuck would you praise Hamas? Hamas is is, is a uh, uh, a faction that that advocates for the worst possible outcomes. We don't support that group, but we know why they're in power. We know how they got in power. They didn't get there democratically. They didn't get there through any sort of fair means. They were supported by the uh, by by Israel, by the the conservative powers in Israel wanted Hamas to take power and made sure that that happened. Undermining secular parties, undermining peace talks, literally killing people. Do you do you know about the uh, uh, do you know about the 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 uh, the, sh the 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 what's it called? Uh, what was it called? Shoot to maim policies. There was a movement in Palestine of peaceful protesters who would simply walk. A big group of people, hundreds of people, would get together and they would walk up to the border walls. And Israel, the Israeli Defense Force, had a policy of shooting those protesters with the goal of disabling them. And there have been records of IDF members uh, uh, keeping track of how many kneecaps they blew out with their sniper rifles. This is well documented. This is not hard to find out. That peaceful movements were treated that way. Yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Mycena says overly fixating on on pro Hamas lefties paints an inaccurate picture. It's literally helping the. It's literally helping right wingers.
It helps right-wingers to overly fixate on stupid assholes instead of going, shut the fuck up about some irrelevant fucking Twitter poster. I'm talking to you right now about the facts of the situation. As we speak right now, Israel and all of its allies is justifying revenge on civilians. Address that. Don't fucking talk to me about some stupid, irrelevant moron on Twitter. Why do you fucking care about some stupid uh, mod or Hassan mod or something on Twitter? Talk to me about the facts of the issue. Stay on topic. Don't fucking pivot away. No, lefties go, well, um, um, they choose one of two paths. They go, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not that type of lefty. Please, please, I'm one of the good ones. I'm not like that. Watch, look, I'll make fun of them for three days just so you know I'm not one of them. As the person on the other side is making the psycho Wojak face with their t sharp teeth grinning from ear to ear going, yes, the lefties are fighting, infighting while I drop bombs on innocent people. Yes, we get to do an ethnic cleansing. The lefties have no fucking clue how to engage on these topics, despite supposedly giving a shit about them. It's so fucking infuriating. And then, of course, the other option is equally stupid. The other thing that lefties will do is they'll go, well, well, no, um, um, actually, with that stupid uh, idiot uh, uh, Reddit mod uh, who said uh, Hamas is based, actually, well, what they actually mean was, duh, duh, and spend fucking five hours justifying somebody they don't even know saying something stupid. If people really care about these issues, seriously, and I mean this, and this goes out to all of the lefties out there, okay? All of them of all types, whether you're a viewer or a lurker or a content creator, all of you out there, okay? If you really care about this issue, get fucking serious about it, okay? Like, get real, okay? Think for just a second about how you decide to use your voice, your time, your platform, okay? Well, think about it for just a minute. And get the fuck off Twitter. Get the fuck, seriously, get the fuck off Twitter. Um, the misinformation going around this time uh, is worse than it's ever been. Ever. And I mean that. And I say this as somebody who uses Twitter uh, as a part of, of, of trying to find out information to talk about things seriously from a, from a, from a creator's perspective, okay? I've used Twitter uh, for years. I was on Twitter during Ukraine, during all the Ukraine stuff igniting. I was on Twitter during all the uh, all the various BLM stuff, okay? Um, I've seen various waves of this, and this is the most misinformation I've ever seen. Um, the The trending tabs are genuinely useless. If you look at like the trending tabs um, for this topic, you will see blue check British journalists calling for a, a, an ethnic cleansing of the people in Palestine mixed in with endless blue check spam of videos that have no date, no information, no context, just sometimes not even any commentary just videos of unknown things. You'll see like a, a picture of like a protest where some guy with a Palestinian flag is saying something uh, in, in a language and going rah, 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 and there's no context, no date, no information, no verification, just spammed. This shit gets out all over the place. And there's a hundred thousand quote tweets of it, all of them saying it's one thing or another. There is stories that are completely unverified, pictures of buildings getting blown up from different conflicts, not even an attempt to verify any of this shit. There was the fucking Arma 3 thing. There was footage of from a video game that people were saying was uh, a, 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 a Hamas fighter shooting down an Israeli jet or an Israeli fighter shooting down a Hamas jet. And it was from Arma 3. It's cr crazy, okay? And I wanna just, I wanna top this off. I was set, I was sent a really cool article earlier by a friend, by, by my friend and friend of the show, okay? Uh, uh, Grime Dango. Uh, just a quick little way to top this off, the get off of fucking Twitter rant, okay? Six months ago, NPR left Twitter. The effects have been negligible.
okay? NPR, all of NPR left Twitter, okay? All of their associated accounts left Twitter, all right? NPR's main account had 8.7 million followers and the politics account had 3 million, okay? And guess what? NPR officially announced that their internal an, uh, analysis of their metrics says that their traffic has dropped by only a single percentage point since they left Twitter. Not even enough to make a correlation to the value of Twitter. Twitter is literally like shoving your head in a toilet bowl, in a filthy toilet bowl, and convincing yourself you're doing it for a good reason. One of the, one of the, an 8.2 million follower account, okay? Lost less than a percentage since they completely left Twitter, okay? Leaving Twitter will not have a negative impact on your life at all. What's more so is reducing your Twitter use will not have any negative effect on your life. In fact, I would argue it would have a positive effect because it has for me. My biggest regret has been getting sucked slightly, and I mean just for a couple days, getting sucked back into Twitter as the result of this issue unfolding and me out of habit going to do some of the things that I used to do. Back when uh, the Ukraine stuff was unfolding at the very beginning during the BLM stuff, you could go on Twitter and you could find people talking about stuff. You could find citations to articles. You could find all kinds of people having conversations about it. You can't anymore, okay? And I, out of, out of habit and out of curiosity, I decided to see how it would work out if I tried to do some of my old research tactics that I used in the past on new Twitter. You can't. And instead, it sucks people's energy out. It sucks people into these warped perceptions where they think it's more important to pick up, to like get in a back and forth discourse with some random mod of some random streamer instead of actually engaging with the fact that the president, the democratic president of the United States is unequivocally looking the other way as, as uh, uh, 6,000 bombs are dropped into, into civilians' homes as white phosphorus is sprayed onto the skin of, of, of civilians and fucking children. As, uh, as liberals and conservatives alike justify genocide based on misinformation. Can you guys imagine if every lefty that was engaged in like stupid Twitter infighting instead, uh, instead simply posted uh, information that that in that educated the average person about the fact that Hamas wasn't like fairly elected uh, as representatives of the Palestinian people? Do you know how much good that would, how much more good that would have done than a bunch of lefties just arguing back and forth about who said what? If instead they just posted a link to an article that explained that, even if only a fraction of people actually read that article, even if only a smidge, it would have been fucking orders of magnitude more useful to a better world. A waste of brain power. Shoving your head in a toilet and, and convincing yourself that you're doing it for the good, greater good. The median age of Palestine is 18, is that what it is? It's 19.6. The median age is 19.6. And you're trying to tell me that uh, in 2006, when these people, when the me when when the median person in Palestine was uh, what 13 years old? No, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Uh, wait, hold on. 2006 was the last election. Sorry, I almost said, <laughs> I almost said six years ago. I'm so sorry. It was what uh uh almost 20. What set? How many years ago was that? I can't even do math right now. How many years ago was that? I'm so terrible at mental math. No, hey, hey, you fuck. I am Adolf Hitler! Of course the soundboard had to be on when I did that, 17 years ago. So you're telling me when all of these people were two years old, all of these median age people, uh, all of the, the, the median 
Palestinian uh, civilian they elected uh, they elected to get bombed when they were when they were fucking two years old. There's around 700,000 people in Palestine that are 14 or under. Oh, cool. So when they were literally in their mother's belly, they voted to get bombed in the future. Do you see what I mean? That if lefties just chose to ignore the stupid assholes, if lefties chose to ignore tankies, who, by the way, tankies are not a significant faction on the left, okay? I need you guys to understand that. Tankies are loud on Twitter. There are basically no tankies. If you actually consider the num the total number of people who are left and the total number of tankies, there's basically fucking none. They're just loud as shit on Twitter. Okay, if if lefties on the ma on mass chose to ignore tankies, ignore these fucking idiots, or just say that person's a fucking idiot anyway, can you stick on the point? The fact that you're justifying this attack because the 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 Gazans voted for Hamas, even that one single talking point. Can you imagine how much more good would go would would be done? Let alone if lefties could learn more than one talking point. More, th let alone if lefties could learn about the fact that um, Hamas was explicitly backed by Benjamin Netanyahu's party. The fact that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is openly uh, uh, gloating over the fact that they're going to flatten civilians. The fact that American politicians are frothing at the mouth, ready to kill innocents. All of that shit could be used to actually make a better change in the world, at least something. I haven't seen enough to know what Hassan's takes are. The takes that I've seen of um the tanks that I, the takes that I've seen of Hassan on this issue have not been um and I I there's some that I could have missed. I don't know. I haven't watched all of it. Uh, I literally only have enough time, and I've been watching a lot of different people's coverage. I didn't happen to catch a whole bunch of Hassan's, but most of what I saw from Hassan was not, um, was not, like, super offensive. I could be wrong, but I know he's had bad takes in the past. I was one of the people who criticized his take on, um, on, uh, Ukraine. Killjoy says, the median age in Palestine is 18 years old. Israel has a median age of 29, and the median age of America is 39. They are kids. They literally don't have enough gu g adults to actually create a functional or fair government, and the idea they are an actual threat to Israel is insane. He had really bad takes. He's pretty much justifying Hamas. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen that. Maybe he did, but I haven't seen him do that. I'm, I, 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 I am not close to the idea that he's done that, but I, the clips that I've seen, and admittedly I've only seen a few, he was not doing that. Rhodes says, you know the 90-something-year-old soldier the IDF was celebrating recently? He was a member of Lehi, the Zionist terrorist group who assassinated a politician named Folk Bernadotte, who had sa saved 30,000 people in the Holocaust because he wasn't anti-Arab enough for them. That is psychotic and sickening. I guess... My rage is all over now. I hope it was cathartic to you to hear me get mad about this. I'm sure for many people in my audience, I know you guys are really good about this most of the time. I, I over, over time, over many, many, many different issues, I know that I've taught a lot of members of my audience and that I tend to attract people who aren't super interested in wasting their time and instead care about the issues they claim to care about. I just wish that we could have more of that on the online left because in its current state the online left is failing massively especially on on issues like this that are of great importance the propaganda um is like this is not we, basically this issue is like uh it's like playing on easy difficulty for dealing with propaganda okay when you have um when you have the st the the heads of state in Israel just being like, we're dealing with human animals, that's words that they used, we're dealing with human beasts, um, you're dealing with, that is like the, that's, that's easy mode for being able to point out propaganda. The left is never gonna be able to deal with more complicated issues, actually complicated and difficult issues, as, a, as like a, a cluster on the internet, if we can't even deal with ones like this, if we can't stay on point and focus on what matters. What matters is the fact that Israel is uh, is currently using a terrible terrorist attack to justify 
an, an even more shocking terror attack, okay? They're using overwhelming state power to kill people who are literally trapped and can't go anywhere, mass killings of, of, of civilians, and it was justified using a terrible terror attack, and the left is struggling with how to, how to handle messaging on this, with how to communicate on this issue. That's a bad sign, okay? In my opinion, that's a bad sign. Now, the good news is, of course, that uh, the online left uh, doesn't really matter all that much, okay? Uh, especially because most of them are trapped on Twitter, which increasingly doesn't matter anymore. But what matters is the communities that, uh, that do choose to engage. Um, we are one such community. Uh, there are many other communities out there who are choosing to take themselves a little more seriously uh, on, on issues like this and who are choosing to uh, engage more productively. And I do think that communities online can have more of an impact. Obviously, there is no there is no border around the online left, okay? The online left is a very, very loose collection of people, okay? And as you know, I have always cautioned people from overly fixating on a uh, on a group that is so broad uh, that it contains liberals and tankies, and both of those are supposed to be considered a part of like some sort of leftist uh, uh, tendency. I I don't I think that's absurd. However, um, this should be taken as a moment to recognize um, that uh, the that 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 cluster is not as uh, well associated or organized or connected or communicating as well as it could be. And so I think the, I, the goal is then to focus on where communication is upheld, where people are actually doing things, the communities where people are able to handle these things and to get that shit out there. To, to st if you care about these issues, get the videos, get videos like mine out there share them with people so that it changes, so we can make it so it's not so fucking horrifying, it's not so stupid, it's not such a time-wasting nightmare to just go and be like, oh wow, uh, the, broad, the broad connections of the left are completely uh, asinine and are paralyzed in the face of, an un of, a f of a fairly uncomplicated issue as far as political issues go. This is part of the Grand Gardener arc that I'm on, by the way. That's what we're calling it. That's what I'm calling it, okay? We're in the Grand Gardener arc, okay? The left is in shambles. We are standing in a, in, in, in a forest that has been ravaged by a forest fire, mentally using our imagination here, and we are now planting the, the future of what online spaces are gonna look like, and I'm doing my part, okay? I'm planting the types of things that I want to see more of in the world. And I'm building connections, I'm building those, those uh, greenhouses, the, the, the um, what's the scaffolding for all of the beautiful things that are going to grow in the future. That's what we're on, we're on the Grand Gardener arc, okay? We're connecting. Connecting, growing, planting, cultivating, okay? This shit is, uh, is, is uh, out of control, all right? We gotta do better than this. We gotta do way better than this. Rhodes says, I am outraged by the efforts of the Israeli government right now. They do not stand for the Jewish people merely to maintain and enforce power that was bestowed upon them by British colonialists to oppress the people of Palestine. Yeah, and the truth is, there are a lot of Jewish people, a crazy amount of Jewish people, not just, and, and Israelis and Jewish people, both of these communities have a huge amount of opposition to, um, uh, to uh, Netanyahu's plans right now. If you look at polling inside of Israel, polling uh, is going very strongly against Netanyahu, okay? That doesn't mean that they that that it's a hundred percent or that improvements can't be made. But there are a lot of people who oppose this, and what what we gotta do is 
uh, get our shit together enough to make sure that the, the propaganda can stop convincing normies to take the wrong position intrinsically. We need to be able to get good at, at deflating these fear-mongering propaganda efforts that make the jobs of conservative powers Same easier. Here. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's only so much that American English-speaking lefties can do, but we can definitely do better than we did this time. And I think that it's fair, uh, uh, given that all of this is still ongoing, to try and uh, give a little bit of concussive, uh, concussive repairs uh, by going, hey, can we can we have a collective grass-touching moment? Can we? I've got. Almost, I've got 550 people approximately listening to my stream right now, and I bet if all of you choose to engage more productively, that it will have a notable effect on all this shit, and it will echo outwards. If you convince other people, uh, uh, give them the tools of the information that I give you here, and get some more of your own too, that we can have a knock-on effect. That we can improve this shit. And I'm just one small community. I know I'm not the only community engaging in this type of thing. Anyway, if you found this valuable, please make sure that you press like down below. Leave a comment if you have some thoughts you'd like to share, because I, God knows I'd love to see some, some productive and useful thoughts on this issue. Uh, and of course, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so you can hear more uh, cathartic, uh, thought-provoking, and useful thoughts from yours truly, Demon Mama. Um, I know that this is a kind of an intense issue, that I was very angry in this section, um, but I hope that uh, my anger was directed in the correct direction, because um, I really want, if I'm gonna talk about, uh, if I'm gonna analyze uh, people engaging like this, I'd like it to be as productive as possible, and I hope I did that. Um, I don't know, anyway, thanks for watching.